Hello everyone at Mustard Seed. You are warmly welcome to today's online Mustard Seed service. I hope that throughout this service you are aware of and sense God's presence and know that you are deeply, deeply loved by God and by this Mustard Seed community. I know at times it can be hard when we are doing these virtual services to get a true sense of that, but just wanted to share with you just now that you are deeply loved and that you are deeply missed and that our times together are deeply missed, but that through this we are still connected and through God we are still connected. So welcome to today's service. It is lovely that you are here. In these times I found this quote from Desmond Tutu particularly useful and I'm going to share it with you today. Sometimes you wish to say to God, we know you are in charge, but why don't you make it more obvious? And in these times when we felt like we were moving forward and now we seem to be stuck and potentially for quite a long time in this situation, I'm sure some of you potentially share my feeling on that quote. Today we have music from Stephen and Ali and Liz. As always, thank you so much guys for all that you are doing for our worship during these trying times. Liz is also going to be praying and we've got a reading from Christine Van Dien. And our talk today is from Rini and she's talking on the issue of judgment. And I just thought I'd share a little something that I heard a few years ago by a speaker. And unfortunately, I can't remember her name, um, but I found it really, really useful when thinking about um, the issue of judgment. And while I tell you this story and I tell you that I try um, to use it to remind me of this issue, I by no means am telling you that I do not ever sit in the seat of comparison or judgment. So I tell you it as a helpful guide, um, I do not tell you it because it has made me in any way perfect. But luckily God knows that and still deeply loves us despite that. So I, yeah, as I say I was at this talk and one of the things that was spoken about was um, the sin of comparison and that when we compare ourselves with others um, it always leads to judgment and um, it works both ways in the sense of you look at someone and think I would never do that I'm far better than that person you are judging yourself as being far better than that other human and similarly when you do it the other way around and you look at the other person and you think oh I could never be like that um, you know, she does that so effortlessly or so beautifully. I wish I was more like whoever it is that you're thinking of. And in the talk, um, she spoke about how actually both of those never lead to anything good, never lead to anything positive. You either are putting that judgment on someone else, you've maybe not said it out loud, or you maybe have and you've made them feel bad, or you've internally put it on yourself and you've left yourself feeling bad. It doesn't lead to anything positive coming from it. And she spoke about that very much being a really powerful tool for the devil to be able to use because it's almost happens without you really thinking about it, but it leads potentially to such destruction of either yourself or of others. And she spoke about if you move yourself from the seat of comparison to the seat of love, love for others and love for yourself. So instead you're thinking, my gosh, for that person to do that, I wonder what's going on in their lives. Or that person has got a wonderful gift from God. I'm so lucky and blessed to have experienced that. I have gifts from God too, and those gifts are. When you come from the seat of love rather than the seat of judgment, God's work can be done far more easily. And as I said, I still often will be sitting on the seat of comparison, but through prayer and intentionally trying, try to move myself day by day more and more into the seat of love. So I just thought I'd share that story with you today as we look at this issue of judgment um, which is so challenging for us all. So as we turn to God I just want to um, pray something called the welcome prayer and it's all about focusing on consenting to and focusing on God's presence. I sometimes find that with the online services 
you're sort of a bit here, there and everywhere, you're around in your own home, you might make a wee cup of tea whilst you're listening, you might, you know, talk to the dog, speak to your partner. It's sometimes difficult to be fully focused like we sometimes are in our church community. So I just wanted to pray this prayer of welcome, which is all about consenting and focusing on God's presence. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome the every, everything that comes to me today because I know it's for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person or myself. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. Amen. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name.
is Lord, Lord of all. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to, pl to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet, and then turn and tear you to pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story is told of a young couple who moved to the country. Their only neighbours were an elderly couple who lived in the next cottage. One day, the wife of the older couple looked out the window and observed the young woman hanging out her washing. Oh my, she said, that young woman doesn't know how to do a washing. She's not done a very good job with her laundry. Look how grubby it is. Well, she never taught how to get the stains out of her washing. Her husband said nothing. This went on a couple more times until one day the older woman exclaimed, Oh my, her washing looks so clean today. She must have taken lessons from someone. Have you guessed the punchline? Her husband finally spoke up. Her washing hasn't changed. This morning, I cleaned our windows. I wonder if you have ever been guilty of misjudging someone or something. It seems to be part of our fallen human nature that we look sideways at each other and make judgments, either that we are so much better or that we are so much worse than the person we're judging. I wonder if it's only me or if you ever stand in line at the supermarket and look at what's in the basket or the trolley of the person in front. How often do you think you're to yourself, oh, that's a lot of booze they're buying or oh, they eat nothing but junk food. It's not, not so often that we think, oh, wow, what a lot of fresh vegetables they've got. I caught myself last week watching an older man wheeling his trolley out to his car with four tubs of sweeties. You know these plastic tubs that they bring out before Christmas, um, celebrations, roses, quality street, uh, heroes, that kind of thing. I was thinking with a, with a, a wee touch of envy, he's making the most of the chocolate tubs. But almost on top of that thought, I felt myself challenged. Rini, you don't know that man's story. What if he has a disabled wife who has carers coming in to help, her, coming in to help her, and these tubs are gifts to express his thanks to the carers? Or what if he knows of families near him who are struggling and he just wants to bless them with a wee treat. Now, maybe he was going home to sit in front of the telly and munch his way through all four boxes himself. But it was a timely reminder to me that I don't always see the big picture or the whole story. And in fact, nobody knows all the sides to anyone's story except for God. And for that reason, only God can judge fairly. No matter what we see or think we see, only God knows the circumstances, 
the motivations and the intentions of the person involved. We can't judge fairly when we only see one side of a situation and so we shouldn't judge at all. Now Jesus speaks sternly here to his listeners and calls them hypocrites and David kindly covered the meaning of hypocrite last week. Someone pretending to be something they're not. Someone play acting. Psalm 62 speaks of people who say all the right things, but what's going on in their hearts doesn't match up. How often as Christians do we try to project an image of ourselves that is actually far removed from reality? And what is the effect of that on our community? If we're not being real, if we're all pretending to be something we're not, well, I think it's damaging because it's only as we open up to each other and be honest that relationships will deepen and friendship and fellowship and love will grow. I find it very interesting that if I love someone, I am much quicker to forgive and forget any failings that they might display. I know too that when I make a mistake, I long for others to make allowances for me. And I think that what Jesus is saying here is that it's a two-way street. The more we make allowances for, each, for other people, the more we show forgiveness and compassion, the more likely forgiveness and compassion will be shown to us. The world might call this karma, but Jesus states the principle here in verse 2. For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now the equivalent verses in Luke's Gospel say, so give a good measure, pressed down, running over. And this gives the idea of squeezing in as much goodness as you can, being extravagantly generous which takes us back to what David was saying last week. Now, I believe that we are a fairly generous community, but there's always room for improvement. We love well, but we can always love more. 1 Peter 4 verse 8 says, Love one another deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. We know that we're all flawed. James 3 verse 2 says, we all stumble in many ways. But if we love each other, then that love is like a blanket that covers over all our failings and flaws and sets, sets a place for us all, almost like we were sitting for a picnic together. This blanket that covers over our failings and flaws. Right now it would need to be a metaphorical picnic because of COVID, but you never know, one day soon it might be an actual picnic. How good would that be? There is very definitely a warning here in Jesus' words. We can be very quick to criticise others for their faults and failings while being in denial about our own. We're all prone to self-deception. But if we're going to be of much use in God's kingdom, then we have to have a realistic view of our own shortcomings, whether they're as big as a log or as small as a speck. It helps to make a regular practice of confession, taking a, Lord, a long, hard look at our hearts and our, our motivation and seeking God's forgiveness for the things we don't always get right. And if we find ourselves being misjudged by someone else, asking Jesus for the strength to love them anyway. I love this meme. People are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. 
If you are kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. For you see, in the end, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. The last verse in our passage is a bit of a strange one. Verse six says, don't give dogs what is sacred and don't throw your pearls to pigs. Are we talking about people here? Is that not being more than a little judgmental to describe people as dogs and pigs? Well, there is a judgment that is damaging, but there is a judgment that is wise and godly. There is even a spiritual gift of discernment which gives insight into a person or a situation that is not obvious to most people. There is also common sense and moral courage which judges when something is clearly wrong. As followers of Jesus, part of our remit is to call out injustice when we see it. In this context, dogs and pigs represent those who despise sacred things, whose views don't look like changing anytime soon, and we're warned to not waste our time there. 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us to test everything, hold on to the good, and avoid every kind of evil. People aren't always who they say they are. But I think we're going to hear more about that in a, in a later talk. I just want to finish with a few words from N.T. Wright on this Sermon on the Mount that we're studying. His summary blessed me and I hope it blesses you too. I might need my glasses for this. Jesus' teachings here are not about behaving nicely so that God will reward you with a place in a kingdom called heaven. The sermon is rather the agenda for kingdom people who want to work for the kingdom. The work of the kingdom is in fact summed up pretty well in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor, the mourners, the meek, those hungering for justice, the merciful, the pure-hearted, peacemakers, and the persecuted. These people are not only blessed, but more than that, even in their vulnerability and weakness, they are the ones precisely through whom Jesus intends blessings to flow to others. These sayings are about the type of people through whom Jesus intends to transform the world. When God wants to change the world, he doesn't launch missiles. Instead, he sends in the meek, the mourners, and the merciful. When God wants to put things to right, he doesn't scramble combat jets. He calls people to love and do justice. Through those kinds of people, the blessings of God's reign begin to appear in the world. May it be so. May we be these kinds of people. Amen.
everyone I hope you are doing all right this week um, I apologize for the slight graininess of this recording I'm currently in a hotel room um, and I can't quite find a, a good place with light um, but I hope I hope this is okay anyway um, we looked at Matthew 7 verses 7 to 11 a few weeks ago um, and I quite like to use that um, verse to help us as we pray today ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened so as we pray today when i say the words god of love and light grace and mercy please will you respond with we ask we seek and we knock let's pray God, who is love in its purest form, who loves us unconditionally and delights in every single one of us, no matter who we are or what we've done. God, who made the mountains and the seas and every hair on our heads, we thank you that your spirit is with us now. We thank you that there are no magic words or super spiritual phrases that we need to say to gain access to you. You are already here with us just as we are. You know us, you love us, and you hear us. We bring before you, God, places and situations in the world that seem so dark. The spread of coronavirus throughout the world, the devastating effects of climate change, 
oppression of and violence against black people. The situations that refugees face as they seek safety. We especially think of Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe detained in Iran. In a moment of silence, we bring to you the situations in the world that are on our own hearts. God of love and light, grace and mercy, we ask, we seek and we knock. As coronavirus is on the rise and lockdown measures are tightened in our own country, we ask God that you would equip those leading us with wisdom and integrity in order to make the right decisions. We give thanks for all those in the NHS and ask that you would sustain them as they work so hard. We pray for comfort for those who are grieving. We pray for healing for those who are sick. God of love and light, grace and mercy, we ask, we seek and we knock. We lift to you, God, those in our own city who are struggling with addiction, poor mental or physical health, relationship breakdown, homelessness, and who are struggling to make ends meet. We ask that they would know your gentleness, your kindness, your comfort and your hope. We, we be prepared to be the answer to this prayer, to show your gentleness, your kindness, your comfort, your hope. Help us to be a light in the darkness. In a moment of silence, we bring to mind someone we know who is finding things tough. God of love and light, grace and mercy, we ask, we seek and we knock. We give you thanks, God, for mustard seed, salt food and each other. We thank you for the many friendships that have formed over the years. We thank you for the ways you have worked in us and through us. We thank you for the many ways in which you have sustained us and helped us to, to continue worshipping together during lockdown. In the coming days, weeks and months, we ask for your continued wisdom and guidance. We give you so much thanks for Rich and Jenny and their family, and we ask that you would deeply bless them. God of love and light, grace and mercy, we ask, we seek and we knock. Knowing that you care deeply about each of us, and know the things that make us smile and the things that we struggle with, we present ourselves. In a moment of quiet, we bring our own prayers to you. God of love and light, grace and mercy, we ask, we seek and we knock. Spirit, we ask that you would fill us afresh. Jesus, we ask that in the coming week you would be in our hearts and our minds and that you would transform and renew our hearts and our minds. God, we ask that you would fill us with your light and love and ask that that light and love would flow from us into the people around us. And we ask that you would bless us deeply and that we would be a blessing to the people that we meet. Amen. Thank you so much to everyone who was involved in putting this service together today. Again, thank you very much, Neil, for all of the technology side and making this all run so smoothly. I hope you found today helpful. I hope you sensed God's presence and God's love during it. Um, a reminder that the church services are on today at four and five in the church building. If you would like to go along, just remember to sign up. There's also the six o'clock Zoom for an uh, informal get together and chat. And I do hope that you are able to join one of those today. For now, I want to leave you with a poem, reminding you that despite our imperfections and the times when we judge or when we get it wrong, that we are beautifully and wonderfully made and that we are deeply loved regardless of our sins and our flaws. When I say I am a Christian, 
I'm not shouting, I'm clean living. I'm whispering, I was lost. Now I'm found and forgiven. When I say I am a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need Christ to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and need his strength to carry on. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and need God to clean my mess. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I am worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches, so I call upon his name. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's grace somehow. God bless you. I do hope that you have a wonderful week. A reminder that there are prayers on Tuesday. Please join us. I've been finding them really helpful when I've been able to attend and um, just to be able to see each other and pray for each other. Um, Liz will probably send out the link on the Tuesday if you would like to join then. But thank you so much for joining today. I hope that you have a lovely blessed week and that you sense God's presence and God's love on a daily basis. Take care. God bless. Thank you. Mm -hmm.